Can you guys hear me? Ta -da 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 -da. Okay, you can't see me. It says I'm live. I'm not sure. Can can you hear me? Hmm. Okay, great, thanks. I just needed the sound check. You could see me, you can hear me. Welcome, everyone. We're going to we're going to go into this this special webinar today on on habits to thrive and and what does it really mean to step into the next level of you. So go ahead and get if you don't have a pen and a paper, go ahead and grab that now. And I'm going to share my screen so we can go right into some webinar slides for today's presentation. Uh, and as we do, just just sit in yourself for a minute and get 
really clear on, on why you're here, like what's coming up for you in terms of the energy of the day today. There's a lot of energy on a day like today. And just feeling into what's coming up, like what's very present for you in this particular phase that you're in. All right, and so now that you're a bit present with that, we're gonna dive right in. We've got a lot to cover in today's presentation. So for those who don't know me, my name's Kate Stillman. Uh, I recently published a book called Body Thrive, Up Level Your Body and Your Life with the 10 Habits from Ayurveda and Yoga. And in today's webinar, what we're going to be doing is really getting into our goals versus our habits and figuring out like really what is what is that all about? Like, why do we have to be very clear on goals versus habits? And what's our number one goal? What's our number one habit? And three tools for your habit to work. And also the a need for joy in terms of for allowing actually us to make, like reach our goals and, and develop the habits that are most in alignment with who we are right now. So that's the gist of what we're going to be doing today. And stay to the end for our sweet offer. We're gonna have a sweet special offer at the end. So I'd love for you to stay all the way till the end and you're gonna get a lot out of what's going on today. So this is the thing, right? Is with a community, like for those of us who are here because maybe you met me through the Ayurveda Summit or maybe you've been on my list for, for 10 years, but as a, as a demographic, we're pretty darn healthy. And this webinar is all about, you know, really refining our habits to thrive. So it's interesting as a demographic of yoga, mat toting, green smoothie drinking, supplement popping, spiritually fueled people, we already have some, some awesome habits and we've already reached some, some great goals. Like most of us do eat nutritious food. Most of us, you know, regularly exercise, you know, even more than exercise, we stretch and we, we take time away from, you know, stressful activities and computers and phones and, and screens. And compared to the general population, we rock. And as a result, we rock because of our habits and we have our own subculture and our own subculture has its own habits and its own manner of being. And it's full of its own identities and beliefs. And, and really, we even have our own dress code. I mean, how many of us have worn heels to work lately, right? So I, I want us to fully presence that, keep that in mind that we've already come a long way. I love this from the, the some e-cards. And those of you who are listening in, I just want you to know too, I also posted the slides for this on our Facebook page. If you go to facebook.com forward slash yoga healer, you can click and get a PDF of all the slides. But I love this one. It says, there's this woman looking in her little mirror and, and she's beautiful and she says, one does not need to make a New Year's resolution when one is already this fucking awesome. And uh, I, I thought this was hilarious. And it sort of describes us, like for, for a lot of us, we're pushed to perfection, but we've already done a lot of work. And I'd like for us to, to just actually take a moment and, and reflect on where we've come from. I love uh, this quote from Patricia Albert. Many of you may have heard the podcast with her last September um, on the Yoga Healer Real Life Show. She's, she is the mastermind behind the Evolutionary Collective. And she wrote in, in, in her newsletter today, I love this. She said, taking the time to appreciate the journey and accomplishments of the year is important to me. Being complete means allowing everything to be as it is so that the past is fully integrated and we can move forward free and available for the full potentials existing and inviting us into this future potential. So, you know, just really getting that, like there's, there's this time right now where we get to pause and reflect back on where we've come. And if we don't do this, there's actually a, imbalance that arises right it's more it's more doing than being it's more you know future than past and so just taking a moment to get centered at this this uh choice point this place and time where you are right now 
And what have you accomplished in the past year? Just getting present with what that is for you right now. And letting yourself fill, fill up with that. And there may be disappointments as well. Like I'm not saying it was all perfect. And there may be disappointments. But just whenever breakthroughs and disappointments, whatever is part of the whole parcel, just let yourself take that in for a moment. And at the same time, really sense how the, the future is pulling you forward and that evolution never stops. And so, so I find for many of us, there's often this like little, it's almost like this, ex, it's like, it feels like an excuse, but it's like, oh, I've done enough work on myself already. Like it's all good enough already. But then the, there's this also this tug of like I, a desire and it's often physiological and subtle body oriented or even spiritually oriented where it's like the desire is coming from spirit or it's coming from the collective or it's coming from the unknown, maybe even the evolutionary impulse. And sometimes it's even just coming from the body of like, hey, refine. There's a whole other level. And, and I'd like us to presence that as well right now. Like what is that next level? I love this definition of if we really look at refine, like it, it already is saying that we're fine, right? Like to bring to a finer state, to make more fine, subtle or, pre or precise. And how is that done? It's done through purification, which is interesting, right? I mean, it's, it's a little bit, uh, I don't know, it, 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 it has sort of a, um, what's the word, like a, there's almost a sense of like, there's something bad that needs to be taken out. And I'd like to, to drop that idea and really focus more on, on the precision, on the mastery, right? Of just becoming more essentially who you are. And to Patricia Albert's point, right? Becoming more available, right? So we can move forward and available for full potentials existence, right? Of our existence. That that's a, what we're being invited into. And so get present and even take note of that. Like, what does that mean? What does that mean to you right now? How is that coming in? And it's a receptive act. So you can even turn your palms face up. And let yourself just feel like, what is the refined vision of you? Just take a breath, take a moment. Let yourself feel. And now open your eyes and take note. And it's so important, this act of receptivity, the act of writing down, of noticing. And just see, what is it? Is it more of a sense of being clear on the target or the goal that you're heading towards? And that takes a little reflection too of just just noticing like where where have things gone a little off and 
And what's the reason for that? And that's really what we're going to look at today. Because in order to refine ourselves, what I sense is that consciousness is pulling us into a greater potential, right? And there's a greater potential to, in the experience of refinement, just have better tools. Like we've never had better tools available to us to really hit, to really hit the mark. So if we also have the sense of like, what is it costing us not to be as, you know, as rested, as energized, as maybe an integrity with time or money as we wanted to be, then what's really the cost of that? And if we don't go through this step, what's interesting is we won't know what it's worth and we won't be as motivated to step into our potential. So it's sort of a loaded deal. And I don't mean to like, you know, you know, I don't know, I guess uh, zoom in on the negative. Like that's not really what it's about. It's more about clarity. Like what if I really evaluate from a perspective that's grounded and clear and not needing to filter out or judge the good from the bad? Like what's, what's it costing me? For those of us who are, you know, 20 pounds overweight, like what is that costing us energetically? What's it costing our heart, our liver? What's it costing our work, our dharma? What's it costing our, ourselves energetically and how we show up with those that, you know, we really love and want to and want to be our full self for. For those of us who are underslept, like what is that costing us to not really? I mean, we know there's a lot of studies on sleep and that show basically like the if you're if you're only getting say like six, six and a half, seven hours a night, you're you're a danger on the roads, right? Like sleep deprivation. Uh, do sleep deprived people are just as dangerous on the roads as drunk drivers? Like that to me is just petrifying right and we know that as a culture we're moving more and more in the direction of sleep deprivation that even our children are sleep deprived <coughs> excuse me what is the cost in terms of our own integrity especially for those of us on a more spiritual path like that sense of where you know you're not in integrity with yourself right and like what is what does that cost us and how do we even measure that like how do we even know what that is, but we feel it and we notice it. And when we think of like, what is that costing our career? What is that costing our ambition? What is that costing our lifestyle design? And so just for us to get present with that, again, just because it's just being honest, right? Stepping into a level of honesty. And so when we know what that is, when we've kind of gone through the cost, then we have an idea of the value. And we know what the refinement then is worth to us. And we can actually, we can monetize it. Um, we can put different measurements, different metrics on it. For instance, I know for myself personally, if I'm out of alignment with my habits and I feel uh, just out of integrity in my body, I start to feel out of integrity in my work community. I start to feel out of integrity with... Uh, the people that I'm serving in my work, I feel out of integrity with my family, especially with my, you know, my kid and my spouse, just not being able to be who I want to be with them. And there's actually a, there's a, there's costs in terms of time, energy, integrity, and there's even costs in terms of money. So then I can actually determine the value of what the shift in my habits or the shift in my goals could bring me. And this is so key, and most of us don't do this, and we don't know what it's worth. And then we kind of get into this place where we're just kind of missing the mark, right? Where we because we're, we're not fully aligned. We don't know what it's costing. We don't know what it's worth. We don't know where to exactly to place the spotlight of our attention. We don't know where to invest in ourselves. We don't know what kind of people to hang out with. And so we're kind of we're just like we know what we want. We're not really going after it because there's like part of ourselves that just hasn't really hasn't really figured out how how to value it and put what we want behind the value. So I want to talk about five five reasons we miss the mark in terms of our in terms of our goals um, and also in terms of trying to shift our habits in line with our goals. So the, one of the biggest thing and we're going to get into this inside out today, but our goals are not anchored in habits, and this I really find is the biggest reason people are you know, they fall short of their goals, whether that's to lose 20 pounds or whether that's to get more sleep or whether that's to get off Ambien or whether it's to spend more quality time with those that we love. Uh, 
and it can really be anything. It can also be professional goals, like hitting income targets. Uh, it can be professional goals in terms of being more efficient at work, and so we're not like bringing work home or not bringing stress home from the job. It doesn't really matter. The reasons are the same. So I want us to really get this in terms of not hitting our goals, missing the mark. The reasons are the same. And the biggest ones that I see, and there's more than five, but these are five of just like the, the biggest ones that I know that make the most difference, makes the most difference from helping people uh, step into wellness evolution and career evolution as wellness experts for the last, you know, basically since I started yogahealer.com in, in 2002. And the drum roll, please, number one reason is that our goals aren't anchored in habits. So we haven't reverse engineered our goals to be anchored in habits, including micro habits, these little tiny habit changes. Number two, no peer support. This is huge. Most people don't know how to generate uh, peer support, generate, organize, uh, maintain, sustain, uh, and even sometimes investing in, which is number three, it sometimes ties into number two. I find it really does at levels of mastery in particular, uh, that we just don't, we just don't put the peer support uh, braces into place to hit the goal we want. Number three, we don't invest. Uh, in investment, it can show up in terms of money. It can also show up in terms of time, in terms of priority. Number four, we don't, we don't hire someone that knows how to get us there. We don't hire a coach um, or a mentor. Uh, and by hire, it can, that can be like monetary exchange. It, it needs, there needs to be some sort of exchange. Uh, there's, I mean, I use all sorts of different ways like I've I've worked trade I was a work trade uh, at both the California College of Ayurveda and the Yanger Yoga Institute but I was what I want you to see here is that there was guidance in exchange for something right that I was invested in the guidance I was receiving number three is tied to number two and number four right it's big but we don't get guidance we don't get the guidance we need we're not spending time with someone that's already hit the mark And number five, we haven't made it a game. <laughs> and this is this is the coolest thing, like based in desire, making it fun, keeping score. That's one of the biggest. Uh, what's one of the biggest uh, attributes of a game is that you keep score in a game, right? So simply by keeping score, making something a game, we're much more likely to hit the mark. All right. So what I found was that 10 years ago when I was in, or it's even more than that, as an Ayurvedic practitioner and as a certified yoga teacher, my clients would come to me and they, would, they, wanted, they wanted to shift. They wanted to lose weight. They wanted to sleep through the night. They wanted to go through menopause with ease. They wanted to stop their horrible menstrual cramps. They wanted uh, to minimize the effects of lupus. Like there was you know, all the autoimmune disorders. They wanted to drop their allergies. They came and they, they wanted these very, very specific things. And the way I was trained was more or less like, you know, I, and I have this slide here of a, of, a, of a guy with a white sleeve, like it looks like a doctor, handing a prescription to a, a patient. Uh, and as a practitioner and as a yoga teacher, that was more or less what I was doing. Yes, I was using herbs and yoga postures instead. I was using meditation techniques. Instead, I mean everything from body work, color therapy, all the tools in the Ayurveda and yoga toolkit were the tools that I was using. But I was using it in the same way. It was a, it was prescriptory, right? Like here's your prescription. Here's what you need to do. Now go do it. And what's the problem there? Well, information isn't equal transformation. Does not equal. So what happens there, right? If, our, if we're giving information, or if we know what to do, because someone's given us this information or we've researched it, we've looked on the web, and we know what to do. And perhaps we know we should be eating an earlier, later dinner. We know we should be going to bed earlier. We know we shouldn't be checking our email at 10 p.m. We know we should be waking up and meditating. We, we, know. we know. We have the prescription, right? We even have the herb formulas. Like most of our medicine cabinets are stocked with herbs. Right? We have this we have the stuff, but it's not it's not enough. And why isn't it enough? And what we know to do, the going to bed early, the drinking more water, the you know, the the having complete elimination, 
uh, the the meditation, the eating a plant based diet. Uh, you know, not overeating, eating most of our food in the daylight hours, right? Not um, you know, not getting in the snack a day patterns or just putting food in our mouth to soothe our emotional body. Like we know this stuff. We know we're supposed to be moving every at least every hour, right? And we know we're, we're, we're needing deep rest in order to perform optimally in our life. And we know this stuff. So what I found in my work is that basically if the people I was working with did not have the habits, I couldn't really help them. If they weren't interested in shifting habits, the information was just information. So goals without habits don't work. Our habits determine if we're going to hit our goal or not, right? If we're going to lose the weight, if we're going to sleep through the night without drugs, if we're going to experience more beingness, you know, and have the kind of experiential, uh, you know, how do we want to experience our life? How hit our experiential, uh, you know, sense of beingness? Like some of us are here because the body habits that we want are just to be more deeply rooted in presence. That's such a beautiful goal. What habits? are going to determine if we hit that goal. And that's really what we want to get clear on. It's what we want to focus on. And, and for those of you who've read Body Thrive, my book, and it's, it's so exciting now that I have this book. I can't tell you guys. I've been teaching these habits since uh, about 2001. I started a class, a two-hour class in San Francisco called Daily Routines of a Yogi, and that's what the Body Thrive book is, is based on, is that, that two-hour class that's now become a 10-week course called called Body Thrive, became the book called Body Thrive, right? Uh, but it's this idea that our, our habits are the, the stew you. Our habits are, a, a, are, are that which we're soaking ourselves in. And I love this. I actually, this is funny. I pulled a quote from my own book. Isn't that obnoxious? I thought this was so funny. I was like, I need this whole idea to be able to teach on, on this concept of vinayam, which is cultured mannerisms. And to me, like, the idea of, of culture, whenever I heard the word culture, I think of food culturing. I think of making sauerkraut or making miso paste for the cultures I make in my kitchen. So in Sanskrit, vinayam is the cultured mannerisms revolt resulting from your discipline and training. Slow cooked or cultured habits based on deepening your body with wisdom. Those are your repetitive actions as you age with humble discipline you're entering the realm of vinayam, right? So you're entering that realm of where the culture of who you are becoming more refined. So that's the name of the game. And that's why goals have to point back to habits. If you only take this from or today, like honestly, that's enough. Like that shift in thinking of if I have a goal, it's that are going to get. If I have a body goal, better energy, losing the weight, a better diet, like what are the habits that me there? Because that is exactly what our alignment depends on. There has to be integrity between goals and habits. I have this this image here of the, and I'd like us to start thinking in this way, in this community of like there there has to be that that mix that the goals are are rooted in habits, that the habits are rooted in goals. And what starts to happen, I've worked with so many people over years and now is that those that are in my inner circle working with this stuff, they start to get like a whole other sense of how they can reverse engineer goals through habits. And that's what happens is we start to take out a magnifying glass. My child got a magnifying glass for Christmas. She's almost eight. It's like she goes around and she's just like checking stuff out really, really close. And that's what starts to happen is when we get clear what our goals are and we start to understand this reverse engineering the habits to hit the goals, it's like taking the magnifying glass out and starting to realize like that, that that habit does not lead to that goal. And it leads to that like and you start to see where you, you would shoot the arrow and miss the mark. It starts to become blatantly obvious how you know you're stepping into, you know, more more into mastery. So I love this quote from from I look for three things in high Hiring people, integrity, intelligence, and a G level. But if you don't first, the other two will kill you. <laughs> right? Like, so what does that say? So if we know that integrity is this 
is really this mix of our habits being in line with our goals and that integrity is really what it's all about, then that's where refinement comes in. So just take a moment now and reflect on how refinement is linked into integrity for you. And just write down, just take a moment now, just write down like what comes up. Let your intuitive body, your Vijnana Maya coaches start to pipe up the full spotlight of your attention for a moment. This act of receiving intuition is so important. And it's really in our Ayurveda, it, it really goes back to that most basic teaching of, of the alignment into health is to honor the intelligence of our physiology. Right? To really to deeply honor that and to bow to it. To just receive, to bow and say, like, okay, there's a deep intelligence there. And the part of myself that can listen to that, I'm gonna turn that on to listen mode. And when that happens, we 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 stay, we we step into the potential of being more free and clear of diseases we age. And when we don't, what our Ayurveda says is that's like the number one cause of disease. It's a direct violation, right, of the healing process. It's where we, it's where we ignore our intuition. We ignore what we've already learned, which is how the body speaks. All right, so. What happened is in this process for me of really getting that habit evolution is what it was all about, I started to notice that my clients who got results, my students that got results were the ones who were in these committed groups that were based on habits. And it, and it honestly happened, it somewhat happened accidentally, really. Back in 2002, I started the Yogi Detox and we got crazy results. It was a three-week program. It was it was right around the $200 price point, which is like barely changed in, what is that, almost it's like 14 years now. Our next one will be in April. And what we found is that basically people made massive shifts in three weeks and were able to maintain a lot of them. And what I saw in that teaching it twice a year, year after year after year, is that that compared to the clients that would come to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to go back to that prescription image, right, where I'd say they'd come to me, They'd spend whatever, 100, 150 bucks. I tell them what to do, yoga postures, give them a yoga sequence, give them herbal formulas, tell them exactly what they needed to do to, you know, whatever the issues they were coming to me particularly for. And I found that it was so much less effective and so much more expensive. And that's really why I started to just get very, very interested in the habits that are behind yogis, these habits of of Ayurveda. And that's what um, enabled me to like create this very effective course called Body Thrive and, and write the book. So let's get into why it works. So if we really get into how do we get into deeper integrity between our goals and our habits, because this is where we get results, the first thing is we need to know who we are becoming. And what's interesting about this is you can game yourself into a superhero and you actually you need to. There's a great book written on this called Super Better by Jane McGonigal. And she talks a lot about you know, applying games to, to personal evolution. The idea here is, though, it's, I find it really fascinating in terms of yoga philosophy, but basically who you are now has hit, has hit the goal of who you are now. So if you have a goal to be beyond who you are now, then you can't do it with the same egoic sense. So you have to superhero yourself. You have to like get an alter ego, like someone who's a, a bigger and better version, a more refined version of who you are now. And in this, you kind of you kind of make it into a game. You get a different sense of self, and you start to make decisions from that different sense of self. So we need to know who we are becoming. Go ahead and just write down a few of the adjectives that describe the person that you're becoming. So if you're heavier, it might be light. And you might even like, you know, just draw your new shape with a few simple lines on a piece of paper. If it's someone who's more well rested, you might like erase the circles under your under the you know bottoms of your um, your eyeball sockets. Or you might just see yourself jumping out of the bed in the morning, like fully energized and awake, and write down some descriptive words to describe 
who you're becoming. If you're someone who just feels like you don't have time to spend with the people you love or doing the things that you love, just see yourself having expanses of time and choice in how to spend that time. Okay, the second thing is you need to know your what. So now you know who you're becoming. You need to know exactly what you want. So what's interesting about this, so you might say like, okay, I'm becoming, like who I'm becoming is is lighter. But but behind that, right, is is like what what do you want that for? Why, say you want to, for example, be better rested. Say you want to experience deeper nourishment and a, in a, just a very deeper sense of energy, like a sustaining, deep flow of energy. And when we know what that is, like when we know exactly what it is, we can start to reverse engineer habits for that. So get really clear on it is. Like what do you want? Do you want rest? Do you want nourishment? Do you want energy? Do you want time? Do you want space? And write that down. And now get clear on why. So we need to also know our why. Why do you want? So let's use the example of, of energy. Why do you want more energy? Is it to do more intense physical workouts? Like for me, that's a big deal. Like I need a lot of energy because I want to work out hard. I love working out hard. I love having a really fit body. It's, very, it's important to me. It's always been. I've always been an athlete. For me, that's just big. So I want a lot of energy to see if I can like work out harder. Can, can I run faster? Can I jump higher? For some of us, we just want more energy so we like pop out of bed in the morning without feeling like, I need two more hours of sleep. For some of us, we want to, uh, we'll use the experience of um, wanting to be grounded and just have the experience of deeper presence to step into a bigger dharma. Well, why? why like, what's the why behind all that what? Ground it in the most mundane whys that you can. And so say maybe you're older and your joints are getting stiff and you're drinking two glasses of wine at night and you sense that, like, I should really get some of this inflammation out of the body. Well, well why? Why do I want to wake up and feel less stiff? Well, I want to be able to play on the floor with my grandkids. Or say you're not you know, organizing your time well and you're not feeling rested and you have a lot of stress and you're going to bed and you're just like thinking about all the things that you need to do, right? And so what you want is you're like superhero with someone who's like clear and peaceful and grounded and, and not stressed out. And your what, right, is this, this deeper presence and peace and, and peace of mind. Well, why? Why do you want that? Well, maybe you're raising a, a child or two and you want them to have that as a tool because you get that, like the world is getting busier and moving faster and it's sort of crazy out there. And so maybe you want them to, to have a role model and that's so important to you right now. So get crystal clear on your why. Why do you want what you want? Write that down. And now that we have a sense of the who and the what and the why, we can start to design refined habits that are in alignment to get us there. So refined habits, they need to have three different components. They need to hit all three. If they don't hit one of the three, you're going to miss the mark. The arrow is going to go right by the target and not land. So your refined habits, they must be specific they must be doable and they must be desirable. So let's go over what that actually means. So, so habits, can they need to be small enough to break our goal into, but they don't need to be all-inclusive of actually guaranteeing that we're going to get there. And so what that means is like you don't have to, you don't have to, like say for instance you want to lose 20 pounds, like you might not need to go to like a 1200 calorie diet and exercise twice a day. Like that might be um, like that, that could actually get you there probably pretty fast, but it doesn't hit the doable 
<laughs> probably, or the desirable, most likely, unless you're already doing that, right? If you're already doing that, it's probably not a big deal to do it. But if you're not already doing that, that's a huge deal. If you're trying to go from a 2,000 calorie diet a day to a 1,200 calorie diet a day, like that's really specific, but it might totally not be doable. And even if it's doable, if you're not psyched, forget it. Forget it. It's not going to work. So, specific has to be to a time, a place, a length of time or duration to other people or a preceding event. Right? So, a, a specific habit might be I'm going to, so we'll go, let's go with the weight loss example. I want to lose 20 pounds. That's the goal. What's the, what's the refined habit? The refined habit might be I'm going to start eating dinner 30 minutes earlier. And we know this, there's great statistics on this that like if you basically, if you eat an earlier, later dinner, um, you, you're, it's much easier for your body to lose weight than if you eat later. So we'll go with, I'm going to eat dinner 30 minutes earlier, and I'm going to do that five times a week. And then you just check in, like, is that doable? And you look through your schedule, and you start to see there's all these dinner dates and appointments and whatnot. Uh-oh, it's not doable. So when is it doable? Well, it'd be doable on, well, I can do it on the weekends for sure, except for Friday's date night, but I could do it Saturday and Sunday, and I could do it Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, that's four times a week. So now I've got to change the specific. I'm going to eat 30 minutes earlier four times a week. Then you do the check-in. Like check-in, it's a body check-in. Is it desirable? Like is that a habit that you actually are like, yeah, I can nail that. I can nail, I can own that sucker. And, I, and I'm psyched, I want to. So go ahead and take a moment now and look at your who and your what and your why. And... And then design a habit that's specific, doable, and desirable. So the doable has to be without, I say, her, her, Herculean effort. It cannot have to be Hercules to do it. Because if you need to be Hercules to do it, you're just setting yourself up for, for failure. So don't do that. It has to be doable. And the desire, do the body check-in. All right, some of you might be coming up with more than one habit. In fact, you can identify three small habits, and this is a good exercise to do. So go ahead and write down two more small habits that will help you reach your goal, and this gets you in the habit of specific, doable, and desirable. It also, basically, it says like, your, your, like one idea might not be the best idea. So have some options for yourself. Another example for the person that's carrying an extra 20 pounds and uh, is feeling more like stiff and sluggish in the morning and has a lot of, say, food-based food -based cravings, they might switch from using 15-inch dinner plates to 10-inch dinner plates. That's it. Just change out the plate they're using. Specific, doable, desirable. Another thing they might do is just have a good lunch, like not not be working during lunch. They might just eat a better lunch and see if that naturally shifts their uh, appetite for dinner. This is another basic body thrive habit, a basic habit from Ayurveda and yoga is to eat your main meal earlier in the day rather than later at night. And that helps us digest and absorb and be energetic through the day and it doesn't put a lot of... Uh, it basically doesn't put a lot of strain on the body to digest food at a time when the bile isn't as accessible. So another refined habit might be to have a good lunch five times a week. Specific, is it doable, is it desirable? So go ahead and finish writing yours down. And now go ahead and cross out two. Choose the best one. Go with the desire on this one. It's there's a word for for desire in Sanskrit. It's raga, and it's 
often used in a from a classical interpretation it's used in a negative way like you're supposed to be neutral to your desire but in a more tantric interpretation you actually there's this idea that your desire it, it can be non-personal it can actually be the desire of evolution like there can be just a, a sparkiness to it uh, that it's 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 an intelligence that's built in to what we want. Danielle Laporte did a lot of work on this. I'm sure many of you have read the desire map uh, and, and many of you have probably done quite a bit of work in that area. So you, you're attuned to like, okay, yeah, I'm going to circle. So you're going to cross out two, circle one. All right, the next part is scheduling your habit. And this is a really big deal because you may have decided we'll, we'll go with uh, eating a good lunch and not distracted five days a week. But if we don't schedule it, whether you use an online calendar or a paper calendar, it doesn't matter. Some of you may even use a, um, an, you know, like a little a smartphone or a smartwatch, right? But you actually have to put it in. So take a moment now, open your schedule and schedule your habit in. And it might be a recurring one. That's what mine does. I just use a, I use Google Calendar. It's on my phone. It's on my tablet. It's on my computer. Um, and it has reminders. And so I set the reminder for the things I want to be reminded about. And it pops up. And it reminds me. Okay. If you leave this step out, honestly, chances are you'll fail. And I don't say that to be mean. It's just... We just quickly now, like behavioral science is awesome, and it shows us that if we don't schedule it in, it's not going to happen. In yoga, we know that this repetition, this doing something five days a week, doing something seven days a week, that this this rinse repeat, rinse repeat, rinse repeat, rinse repeat. This is what creates that cultured mannerism, right? The cultured mannerisms. What habits do you, do you want? On a hand, give yourself that honestly every day, and start moving these little micro pieces into alignment with how you want to age. Because what you'll notice is that wellness evolution is an open playing field. You're in the driver's seat, and you get to design how you want to feel. Now, some of you out there have have chronic disease, some of you out there have diseases that have a death sentence attached to them, right? And so you might be saying like, yeah, well, maybe Kate, maybe not. But what we know from a more uh, a holistic Eastern perspective is that when you take a five body approach to yourself, you've got your physical body, your energetic body, your mental body, your emotional body, you've got your intuitive body and your bliss body, mental, emotional are usually captured into one, that there's a lot of different places for evolution to happen. So even while the physical body might have some incurable disease, there's a lot of room in the bliss body or the more spiritual body. There can be a lot of room in the intuitive body. There can usually be some elbow room in the energetic body, right? And so that's what we, we want to have that alignment with evolution, Goodness, the palms facing up experience of, oh, what habit do I need to just tweak, micro change, shift a little bit, doable. I'm psyched about it. And it's super specific and now it's scheduled in. And that's what we want to look at. If you guys are paying attention here, like this is really big. At this, you will thrive as you age. There's no question about it. And we all have, you know, it's an even, it's a really a level playing field. Like we all have equal way of being able to move forward in alignment with what we want right now for ourselves. Those little refinements along the way. Okay, so this is part of where the game goes in is like what gets measured gets done. So say you schedule, say if you're schedule, like you've scheduled it in, you know exactly what to do, but you start blowing it off. Right? How are you going to deal with that? We know what gets measured gets done. Like what is that? What does that mean? Well. If you're going to measure your progress, what you're, e what you're usually going to see is what you're actually doing, what you're not doing. And what that can do is say you find that you're not doing it, right? You're not eating. You're still working through lunch. And then you're overeating at dinner. And you're still fat and waking up feeling crappy, right? And, and this is what people come to me. They're like, I just feel so bloated and I'm sick of having 
this extra 20 pounds and I'm you know, sick of getting up and out of bed in the morning and not feeling like I'm exercising. And you guys, FYI, people naturally wake up and feel like moving. So if that's not happening for you, if you like wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, the day, I gotta get some coffee, right? Like that's not natural. That, that is out of alignment. Okay, so if we're not doing what's on our schedule, we got to go back and we got to look at, uh-oh, it wasn't doable or it wasn't desirable or it wasn't specific. And that's okay. Failure is awesome in this game. They say, I love this again from Jane McGonigal in Super Better. She talks a lot about how uh, video, like part of the reason video games are so addictive is because it can, it can adjust to your progress level and keep you totally engaged. So if you get better faster, it'll keep giving you harder and harder things to do. But if you don't, it'll actually give you easier things to do. You need to game yourself. You need to game your habits so that they're doable, so that they're easy enough. We use a, a technique in Body Thrive, and you'll see this in the book. It's called Kaizen, and it's just making it doable, making it easy enough that you can totally nail it. Um, and it's moving you in the direction that you want to go. So how are you going to measure your habit? Well, I use a Google Doc. Um, some people use apps on their iPhone. Some people use, uh, like this is a printout, the weekly meal planner, for example. Um, the, the person I was describing before could use something like this and just write in what they were going to have for lunch every week. And it might be like they might go out twice a week to lunch and meet a friend, and then they might on the other three days bring their lunch to work and sit in the rooftop garden and eat it there or, um, or eat it in the conference room if they're at work or eat it in the kitchen if they're at home. Right? But they would actually write those little details of exactly the specificity of the habit into lunch and then they would keep score. They would circle it if they actually did it or check it off if they, if they actually did it. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you print something and put it on your fridge or if you're like me and you use a Google Doc. The idea is to keep score. You'll see on this slide there's a desired score. That's the target we want to hit. We want to know how many times a week, for how long, the duration, the specificity. Um, and what score we're going to get, right? If we're going to do passable or if we have to go back and revise our habit just like a video game would do for us. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about how we're not going to miss the mark with our habits. So right now if we like look back on what we've done in almost this hour, and we're going we're gonna to keep going for about another 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll stay on the line and take some questions, and I'll also introduce you to the Body Thrive strategist for those of you who just want to talk to someone about your goals and want to talk to someone about the habits that you're starting to design for yourself, um, that'd be great. And then also, Alex, would you put in the chat window the link for, we have a little quiz that you can take that um, just will help you get really present if, about being in line with the habits to thrive. So look for that there and we'll also email it to you. So let's look at what you've created so far, right? You've basically gone through who you want to become, your alter ego, your super heroine or hero self. And what I invite you to do is after this call to actually like buff that out, like get an image, draw it out, give yourself a cape. You know, if you want um, a mask, give yourself a mask, like get, get into it. Like what boots would this person wear? Like what tights would they be dressed in? Or maybe they have loose flowing gowns, like who knows, but get clear, get an alter ego, get a heroine image. Get even more clear on what and the why. Break that into a habit that's specific and actionable and doable that you can line up with. And now let's talk about a few of the other reasons that people can can miss the mark, even when they've when they've done that and when they've scheduled it in and they're keeping track. There's ways to make body habits easier to integrate, easier to step into and to get real results in terms of feeling more energy, being at the right body weight, being more grounded in ourself, having the kind of presence that we want to show up with in relationships, having the kind of access to our spiritual nature in action that we sense that we can. So let's look at what goes wrong. In terms of missing the mark, 
we need to have these five things basically and this is what I found again and again and I'm going to I'm just going to talk a little bit about each one um, and in my experience so so for those of you who don't know me I've basically been teaching wellness courses since uh, about 2001 uh, what I found was that groups evolve so much faster than individuals and people have way more fun doing it and so I started to design courses that would get people results faster both in terms of uh, you know the basic things of like detoxing their body but also more complex things like learning learning are your Veda right like really learning it for themselves and for their I attract a lot of yoga teachers so for their yoga students for their families etc and what what I found is that there's a certain number of dynamics that are super effective and that if they don't if they aren't part of the equation the whole process slows down so when you look at when you look at your goal, what I want you to do now is actually put a timeline on it. So we know what the mark is. Like, say you want to lose 20 pounds. Like, well, by when? By you know 12 weeks from now, and a year from now. Say you want to be um, getting you know eight hours of sleep on average a night. Like, by when? And when you have your goal with that kind of specificity written down, just do a quick body check and just make sure, like, yep, that's what I want. So take a moment and do that now. Okay, and now what I want to do is tell you a little bit about what I've discovered in working with and putting together groups for years and years and years is that this, our goals need to be anchored in habits. We've gone through that inside and out today. Number two, we haven't talked as much about, but we need to organize peer support. And what this means is, say your habit is to lose 20 pounds and the people that you hang out with are heavy. Right, that most of the people you hang out with are are also over over their ideal body weight and don't have the habits of like popping up in the morning, hydrating, eliminating, and uh, and then moving, right? Like moving their body, like getting a lot of prana in and out. Maybe they're not eating the healthiest of foods. Maybe they eat ice cream and watch TV at night, etc. Like if you don't organize peer support that has the habits that you want, like honestly, good luck. It's you're just making it you're making it 10 times slower like let alone harder yes harder but also slower so then your time goal you probably aren't gonna hit it and I'm not saying that to be cruel I'm just saying that from my experience peer support is huge I wanna read this little section from this book that me and my team are using called the, the 12 week year get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months by Brian Moore I've read this like 20 times at this point I thought this was so crazy. I was like, what page is that awesome little statistic story on about peer support? And for the yogis out there, you're going to love this. It was on page 108. Okay, I'm going to read two paragraphs. Don't go it alone. The second element of process control is peer support. There was a fascinating article in Fast Company in May 2005 entitled Change or Die that presented studies conducted with patients who had severe medical conditions that required lifestyle changes in order to live. The sad fact was that after only 12 months, 90% of the patients had reverted back to their old lifestyles, virtually guaranteeing an impending death. Faced with the imminent threat of death, an overwhelming majority of people still failed to consistently make more productive choices. There was a group that had a much higher success rate, almost seven times higher. These patients were involved in peer support sessions and they had a success rate of nearly 80%. The group not involved in peer support had a 10% success rate. These statistics remind me of what George Shin, the owner of the, Charlotte, of the Charlotte Hornets basketball team, once said. There is no such thing as a self-made man. You will reach your goals only with the help of others. The groups involved in peer support met on a regular basis and discussed their progress, struggles, and challenges. By encouraging one another, they generally stayed on track. The lesson is 
that if you are implementing change, don't go it alone. Your chances of success are seven times greater if you employ peer support. I read that because I couldn't have said it better myself, and it's always nice to have a scientific study to back up these, these theories. Um, it's definitely been my experience in, in leading groups and courses. I actually don't work with people one-on-one -on -one who are not in a group. I can't. I cannot help the person. That's how strongly um, I know that peer support is, is effective. All right, number three, and, and don't set yourself up to miss the mark, is in, invest in you. Like invest in this refinement. Get really clear. Like how would it help for you to invest time? How would it be helpful for you to invest money? Right? How would it be helpful for you to invest your attention, your awareness? We often don't actually have what we need to get there. And because our investment patterns in terms of time and energy and money and awareness Right, are more consistent with who we've been than who our superheroine is, than who our alter ego is, we have to invest differently. And this, more than anything else, is where I see people get caught. I mean, all the time. I was talking with someone today who hurt herself three weeks ago, and I'm like, how have you invested in getting the support you need for the healing process? And she's like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. And... And this is the thing, we're taught, it's funny, with money, when we're young, we're taught to invest in like 401ks and educational institutions that will give us degrees, right, that might get us a job or then we're going to need to buy a house and get insurance. Like there's a certain way that we're taught to invest. But the, but the thing of it is, we're not taught to invest in ourselves. And back to Warren Buffett, he says the number one investment you can make is to invest in yourself. Right? And, and, and he's really into investing in your body and investing in health and like all this stuff. I was at a, a party last night and this older woman said to me, you know, the only thing you really should have, the only thing you really have is your health and you should invest in it. And I was like, I couldn't agree with you more. You're like, you're preaching to the choir, lady. It's awesome. Uh, but a lot of people don't discover that until they lose their health or they lose their energy or they lose their sense of integrity. They lose their sense of self. And yet they've got a 401k, right? Or they've got a lot of clothes in their closet, right? Or a lot of superfoods on their shelf or whatever. And it just hasn't actually gotten them where they wanted to go. So I just want to bring that up because it's such a big thing. You have to change how you invest to become your superheroine. All right, next, you have to get guidance, honestly. Like if you don't have someone that um, can get you there, that's already been there, that knows these roads inside and out, it's just going to take you, it's going to take you longer. And so if time is of importance for when you want to be in the next version of yourself, um, that's, the, that's a very, you know, getting someone who's been there is really important. And, and the last thing is to game your habits, to make it fun, to make it, to make it something that's scorable, that's doable, that you're excited about. That is crucial. All right. So uh, I told you at the end I would make you an offer, and that offer really is to speak with one of our Body Thrive strategists, both Grace and Tracy are available, and just go to bodythrive.com forward slash apply, and that doesn't mean you're necessarily applying for the course. You can just use that to apply for a strategy session. If you want to talk to someone about your goals and your habits, um, their schedules fill up quickly, so you want to you'll want to do that. And I just want to say, in those sessions, it's great because you can go over your who and your what and your why, and really get a sense of, you know, of also what are some of these that you might miss the mark that uh, that we can help you with, or that we can point you to resources to help you with. I also have a group that's starting on January fifteenth. It's about half full. Uh, and so if you want to apply for that, you can just use the same application, and you also will talk to either Grace or Tracy. Uh, and Grace and Tracy, are you guys here to, to bring on the line and say hi for a moment? I can uh, shift yeah. my screen share. Yeah, great. Me, uh, yeah, hi. Turn off my screen share. Hi. Hi. Let me see if I can get the camera. So I'd love to see... Yeah, there we go. It works. Hey, Hi. let's have um, Grace. You just go ahead first and just introduce yourself. And you've done a number of these strategy sessions. So, what are you finding? Um, well, I'm finding that it's really interesting. It's really neat to connect with people. I've talked to somebody so far um, in the United States, in Trinidad, 
and I have someone to call in Nepal. Um, it's so cool because at the end of the call, I feel like I have new friends. The other night, I talked to this woman, and her kids came on, and my kids came on, and we were showing them the snow because they'd never seen snow there in Australia. Um, people <laughs> seem to be really... I don't know, open and um, willing to share their lives, and I just absolutely love it. And they're all, we're all kind of on this similar path, right? So I feel yeah. super connected. It's really nourishing, yeah. Oh, great. And Tracy, why don't you come on and just say hi? And yeah, hi everyone. Can you can you guys see me? I can't, but see you. let's see. You can see us. Oh, good. Hi. Hi. Uh, so will you just describe a little bit about just the nature of a strategy session and, and how people get actually more clear on their goals through through talking it out? Oh, yeah. So um, it's it's a super helpful tool because we talk about uh, many of the things that Kate talked in the session today, right? What is it that you want to become? What are you trying to do? What has stood in your way from doing that? Um, uh, uh, what happens if you aren't able to to uh, accomplish this for yourself and then we talk about you know different ways that we can actually get this accomplished and then we talk about the, the program the Body Thrive program so it's a super helpful tool as you kind of go through the exercises that we did with Kate here today and we get clear on who we want to become so um, yeah I can't wait to talk to so many more people about doing that and um, I'm not sure if you guys can see me or not now but <laughs> that's okay I've got the other I've got the other slide up well, great, great to hear from, great to hear from you too. So, what you're going to do is just go to bodythrive.com forward slash apply, and and it'll help. The application in itself will help you get more clear on your both your goals and where your habits are are missing the mark. So, I really recommend just jumping in there, get on their schedule, schedule a a session. They'll probably fill up fast. We had I think 1,700 people. Uh, register for today's workshop which is it's so awesome and for those of you who haven't got the book yet it's an it's at Amazon it's called Body Thrive and you're gonna find so much of what we talked about today really reinforced in there and, and you can find there's just a ton of support in the book itself and I also want to announce that we're for those of you on the line who are wellness experts whether you're a yoga teacher or you're a wellness provider or you're a you know I even have um, doctors and nurses that that work with with sharing these habits and coaching people through them, we have the Yoga Health Coaching Program, which helps you become a leader in bringing people through through habit evolution and through the 10 habits that are just part and parcel of the path of Ayurveda and yoga, these time-tested traditions for not just optimizing physical health, but also mental, emotional, relational, and spiritual health. We have a group starting uh, really soon, and so if you want more information on that, go to yogahealthcoaching.com forward slash coach and you're going to find a ton of great information including a, a free one hour webinar that will give you a lot more information about that can can really uh, you know create the next level of your career and the last thing I just want to say is just take a moment and invest yourself in your next refinement like really get clear you're worth it and no one else will do that for you I mean, it's this funny thing where we have to make the choice. Like, we have to actually be our, our biggest advocate and step into it for ourselves. And when we do, it, it just it's just a total game changer. All right. So without further ado, actually, Alex, can, can you come on for a sec? I'm wondering if anyone has questions or comments on anything we covered today, if you can type them into the chat window or post them on Facebook. I don't think I can bring you on live. Let me um, let me switch myself back. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So if you have any, and then Alex, if you could read any questions that come in, I just want to be available. And if and if you guys are done and need to go, that's that's just fine. That's just fine too. So Alex, anything coming up or anything you want to add? Um, I don't see anything coming up yet. Um, but uh, what I do want to add is just what everybody else was talking about on the strategy sessions, it's really, it's a little mini journey of self-discovery. I really encourage everyone to sign up for one because you will find out things about yourself that you maybe didn't even realize. I have talked to so many people that are like, oh, you know, I, I feel okay and I'm fine. And then by the end of the conversation, they're like, 
wow, I want to feel more than fine. I want to feel awesome. Um, so yeah. please, if, if you're even remotely curious, sign up and uh, have a strategy session with Grace or Tracy. Okay, let's yeah, see. Yeah, you know, that's such, an important, that's such an important point is that we often, we often don't know how good we can feel. And what I found, you know, just over years of coaching people, it's wild. Like, even in, in a lot of the yoga health coaches have to go through Body Thrive, and a lot of these people are like they've been teaching yoga for 20 years. Like these are healthy, healthy people, and they go through, and all of a sudden they're like, "Oh my gosh, I've never felt better." And to me, that really speaks to the nature of health evolution. It speaks to the nature of refinement. That there's a sense that that the what we want to design for ourselves is changing. And evolving, and it's beyond ourselves. It's not coming just from us. Having a conversation with someone actually starts to pull the deeper desire out of us. It gets us thinking outside of our pattern way of thinking, right? The samskaras that the the yogis talk about. So, you know, by all means. The other thing is, is that it. A lot of people that we already know, we can't really have a conversation like this with. They're just not going to listen uh, as as deeply or as in a neutral way and be able to just reflect back. So it is really an awesome opportunity. Yeah. Okay, so go I've to bodiesprive.com forward slash. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, okay, the first one here is from Dia. It says, what if your desires are changeable and elusive? Yeah, so if they're changeable, then it's pr there's probably, I mean, really changeable and elusive from an Ayurvedic perspective is it just, it signifies that there's more vata, right? There's just more like air, ether, there's more movement happening. And so then what can happen is we can like start chasing, we start chasing like this desire over here and that desire over there and we get actually more ungrounded. And then we have less integrity, right? Because we're like, oh, I tried this and I tried that and nothing works. And I mean, I, I, I honestly, if I had a penny for every time I've heard that, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, and that's sort of the nature of now is that there's just a lot of, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of different theories. Like, should I do paleo? Should I eat Ayurvedic? Like, should I eat six small meals a day? Should I eat three times a day? Should I eat twice a day? Right? There's like, there's so much information and we, if we have more vata in either our our prakriti or our vikriti, our constitution or the way we go out of balance, what happens is we can get even more ungrounded. So how do we get? How are we going to deal with that? Like I said, that's a very good question. We have to get. We have to get. You know, basically grounded. And so, do you see there? Right. It's like oh. Maybe that's the desire that's underneath all the desires. This is where Ayurveda is so helpful with habit evolution. Like when you merge them together and they they fit together, it's like blast off, right? Then you can then you can ascend and transcend who you've been and step into who you're becoming in a way that's just it's more seamless because you're involving all the different components of the self. So if it's elusive and if it's changing, know it's vata and know that vata needs to get, get grounded and steady. So maybe that's the next inquiry is like, I want to get steady in my desire. Like that's the goal. I want to get, I want to get steady with, with who I'm becoming next. I want, to, I want to get a grounded vision of who I'm becoming next. And that itself becomes the goal. And then what are the habits to get there? Well, they could include, um, they could include meditation. It could even be like a really short practice. It could be um, any practices that ground vata, like doing uh, doing a. If you go through the body thrive habits, and it means like eating an earlier, later dinner, going to bed earlier, waking up, hydrating, pooping, and moving your breath body. Those are the four first four habits. Those are hard to do. They're easier to do in community with peer support and coaching and all that, right? But just that regularity will start to streamline the desire. So if you're eating erratically, if you're going to bed at erratic times, if you don't have a stable, chronically enhancing morning routine, then you're going to keep reaching. So I hope that's, I hope that's helpful. OK, here's another one. Other than the Body Thrive course, have any other online communities been formed to provide support for those working through the Body Thrive book? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So we're starting book clubs, and that is going to roll out in, in uh, you'll start to see a lot of information about that around mid-February, um, and the groups will be starting in early March. And those will just be like totally volunteer, you know, people that just want to get together and form a group and create their own peer support. I think that's it's awesome. It's definitely different than going, you know, through with a professional, but it's awesome. And it really harnesses the power of peer support and community. So I would say whoever's asking that question, email us and make sure you get on the list to start your own group because honestly, stepping into being a leader and having a getting a getting a group of 10 people together and reading the book and you're going to find that it'll really motivate your own personal evolution and you'll be supporting so many others. Okay, here's one from Rachel. Are the strategy sessions based on physical health and diet only? No. No, I mean, this is everything here is grounded in yoga and Ayurveda. So you have a, a physical body, the Anamaya Kosha. You have the pranic body, the energy body. You have the mental, emotional body, right? Which for many of us, we're, we're you know, one of our goals is like, wow, I, I don't want to be so stressed out. Or I don't want to be so angry that I'm like blowing up at my kids. Or I don't want to be anxious, right? I'm over the anxiety thing and I've had it for 20 years. And I wish I didn't worry about stuff that spins me out and doesn't actually result in, in productive evolution, right? So then there's also the intuitive body. I find this so much through, um, through working with people is that we're out of touch with our intuition, and it's because we've been raised in a much more scientific paradigm that's prized rationality over an intuitive um, wisdom, and, and we're just disconnected. So we, we like know what our intuition is, but we're not honoring it. Like we're not acting on intuition. And so there's that, and then there's also the spiritual component, the fifth body of of the bliss body, that there's a, something that's so much more beyond. The physical, like the physical, doesn't get us all the all the way. It's a it's a part of the the picture, right? But that deep inner connectivity that we want in relationship, the ex experience of deep time and in deep space, uh, how we want to age and die without fear, like those are all part and parcel of the Ananda Kosha. So it's important that we're aligned in all these different bodies with the way that we want to experience life and. The way we want to age, when we go back to that, like, what are we stewing ourselves in, right? What mental patterns, what emotional patterns, what spiritual practices, what physical practices? It's all part. It's all. It's all wrapped up in that. So, yeah. Okay. Here's one from Jade. Any tips to conquer procrastination? So, if you're procrastinating. You got to go back to specific and doable and desirable. So chances are you made it too hard. I do that all the time. I'm like, I'm gonna do this thing for 15 minutes, and then it doesn't happen. I'm like, okay, um, let's start with a minute. If it doesn't happen with a minute, I break it down to five seconds. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna meditate for five seconds. Like, what does that even mean? It's a half a breath for me. It's just the inhale. <laughs> Right, but what does it do? It starts a sh it starts a shift. If you're procrastinating, you actually want to hold yourself back. You want to make it so easy you can't fail, but have that step go in the direction that uh, will start to deepen your desire. Like if anyone did that with me, if anyone just deepened their breath when I did, we mimic each other as humans. It's a cool thing. This is why peer support works. If you just simply do that. The next thing you want to do is take another deep breath, right? It's like, oh, and soon you've got like a minute where you're just in a different way of being, a different way of thinking, and, and that's what starts to happen. So discipline is actually tossed out, is tossed out the door. Discipline is not reliable, uh, and so you have to make things just really easy enough that you'll do them. You have time for a couple more? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, this one is from Laurel. It is, how do you apply this to less concrete issues like self-confidence? Yeah, okay, that's a great question. So let's all drop into that. Like, what does it mean to not be self-confident? 
Like we've all we've all been there, Laurel. Like we've all we've all been there and all felt that. And so for some of us, we actually live from that place, right? And it inhibits everything in our life, really. I mean, it inhibits the kind of work we can do. It inhibits the kind of relationships we can have. It inhibits the experience of deep inner peace because we're doubting our, our sense of self. Uh, in again, if we turn to Ayurveda, this is also this is also pointing to a uh, vata imbalance, right? And I, I don't mean that in a sense of like, well, the way that I mean it, let me just go there. I mean it in a sense of a, a place where there's there's room for enhancement. There's a lot more room for connection. And so the experience, like a mantra for that is like, I am enough. It's a mahavakya. It's like a way of reprogramming the mental and emotional body of just breathing in like I'm enough. And that is then the habit, right, is to repeat that. And you might not, Laurel, you might not believe it. Fake it till you become it. Right? You may not believe I'm enough. I am enough exactly as I am. But you have yourself repeat that, maybe even looking in the mirror. Some people will use the tapping technique. You can Google EFT and put the words in with that. But basic mantra works. And you can looking in the mirror works because you start to actually like see yourself change. Like what does it look like to look in the mirror and say, I am enough. I am a-okay as I am. And it just starts to, it starts to create a biochemical shift. It changes the neural pathways between the left and right hemispheres of, of the brain. And it can change the way you show up. So that would be a specific, doable, and maybe even desirable thing. Like, I want to feel that. I just want to feel like I'm enough. And then when you can actually use, we didn't get into habit triggers, there's another free webinar. If you guys Google hack are your hack habits are your veda, I'm sure it'll come up. Um, I may have even made it into a podcast a few months ago. You can create a, a specific trigger and habit and reward. So the habit would be repeating I'm enough for a minute. You press go on your smartphone or your smartwatch. A minute, I am enough, I am enough, I am enough. Right, and you just start to experience that, Laurel. You can use the trigger of not feeling self-confident to trigger that habit of repeating I am enough. So say you're driving the car and you're starting to like doubt yourself and I'm going to get fired from my job and I'm going to blah, 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 and I didn't do that right and I'm horrible at that. And like you're just spinning, the mind's just spinning. That's the trigger. I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. You can even get peer support. Tell your three best friends. Maybe one's your mother. Maybe one's your dog. Tell me I'm enough. And you'll start to see your dog is just like hanging out looking at you. And your dog telling you I'm enough. Not with words. Right? But you can get your mom to call you every morning and say, Honey, I just want you to know you are enough. And so this is, I hope that's helpful, but I just want you to get that there's a, there's a very specific ways we can use exactly the method we did today. You can create a super heroin version of yourself that just is enough, knows that they're enough. People tell this to me all the time, like I get so inspired by you, Kate, because you're, you're present in yourself and you're not holding back from, from doing your dharma. And what they often don't know is that like, at one point that was really scary, right? At one point I didn't have the self-confidence. At one point I just regurgitated the teachings of my teachers instead of becoming very innovative and avant-garde in the way of, of presenting what I, I felt would be way more effective to help people. At one point that was all true for me. And ask any confident and successful person and they're gonna say like, oh yeah, one point, right? And it still happens. I got nervous before this, it was really cute. For like a minute I was like, oh wow, I can feel my heart, feel my temperature rise. So I hope that helps. Okay. Um, I have one more that I want to have you answer, and then a lot of people have put in logistical questions, and if you can email those okay. to info at yogahealer.com, we'll get back to you, and if you have questions specifically about applying for the course, you can email me at admissions at yogahealer.com, um, but here's one more, Kate, that I think would be a good one for you to address, is can you talk okay, about understanding the body check-in for new habits? That's from Mary. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, it's kind of a funny thing, you guys, because I, um, 
And we're going to send us we're sending a survey out to everyone that should come out this next week to find out like where you're at and just you know just just in terms of because our our list grew so much with the Ayurveda summit and for a lot of you we don't know your level of like what you already know and what you don't know. So we really want to know what what you already know and what you want to learn. So I often assume people know things that a lot of yoga teachers know because that's who my list has been mostly in the in the past um, decade and people that are serious yoga students. But now we're branching out. So this is a great question. Go ahead and even if you're sitting, feel your feet on the floor. If you're standing, get grounded in your feet. Spread your toes out and feel your feet even if they're in warm winter boots. Sit tall and just take a breath and start to clear the energy really between the crown of your head and the root of your pelvis to start to feel that there's a flow there and take a breath or two. And now let's start with the first thing that we did which was the heroin. Like see, see the heroin version of yourself. And you know, if she's got a cape and boots and a mask, like so be it. If she has a magic wand or a sword or a herb basket or whatever, a shawl, dress her up. And then in your mind's eye, see her or him. And then just do a body check and just feel in your body, feel in your breath and your gut, your lower belly your heart, your throat, and your third eye is that image in alignment. Is it in alignment with these different vibratory parts of your, your, your physiology and your sub-body? And if it's not, you're like, oh, she's got to lose the shades. <laughs> <laughs> she got to lose the cape. She needs to get gra she needs to be sitting on the floor by a fire circle. Like just receive that, knowing that wherever that intelligence is coming from, and then just sit again. Like now, is it more resonant? And you can do this with the the three little habits you wrote down. So you wrote down three micro, what I call micro habits, or habits that are broken down into tiny actionable pieces. And the one that you circled, go ahead and look down, read that. Is that resonant? So feel again, just repeat that habit like a mantra two or three times. See, is it resonant in your gut? In your root? in your heart, in your throat, in your third eye. So you just check and you just receive. That's all a body check-in is, is you just get in into your body receiving the natural, innate, intelligence that's right there. It starts to wake up the pranic energetic body, it wakes up the vijnana my kosher, the intuitive body. It connects us both to earth and sky or to uh, the physical and the and the subtle or, or spiritual planes of, of who we are. Yay. Is that good? Are we done? I think we're good. Awesome. So, you guys, if you, for those of you who are professionals and want to be a yoga health coach, you're going to get in touch with Alex at yogahealthcoaching.com forward slash apply. And for those of you who want to talk to our our strategist, to uh, to Tracy and to, I'm trying to find them on the slides here. Hold on just a second. There we go. To Grace and, and to Tracy, you're going to go to bodythrive.com forward slash apply and just have a conversation. It's kind of an awesome service that we provide here where we're basically just saying like, hey, we're interested in your health evolution. We're interested in your awake living and career evolution. Just talk, you know, get on the phone and talk to us. And uh, and we're just wishing you an awesome journey ahead. So to so take time, review what you did today, get clear, pin it to your fridge, and uh, and start your new habit. Schedule it, score yourself, and comment on Facebook at, at facebook.com forward slash yoga healer. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Alex and Grace and Tracy.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.